Greetings, adventurers. My name is Kramer, and on today's episode of Cooking Anachronism, we are making a beef roast. This recipe is Oryx roasted with leeks from the official Game of Thrones cookbook. All of the ingredients and the link to the book can be found down in the description. And to complicate what is essentially a very simple beef roast, the real kicker is actually the black pepper sauce. For this recipe, we are going to be using a top round of beef or bison, roughly three pounds. The recipe calls for six leeks. We have very large leeks, so we're only using three. Four carrots diced into rounds, one full head of garlic, olive oil, salt, and pepper, of course. And then our seasoning for the vegetables is going to be a combination of thyme, rosemary, sage, and a bay leaf or two, maybe, depending on how much you're making. So the first thing we're going to do is prepare those vegetables. We're gonna clean the leeks, we're gonna cut the leeks, we're cutting the carrots, and we're also going to remove all of the outer shells from our cloves of the garlic. We're not gonna cut those up, we're gonna keep those whole. After all of the vegetables are prepared, we're going to put them in the bottom of our baking tray. We're gonna drizzle some olive oil over the top of those and then add our seasoning. In order to prepare the beef, we are going to drizzle olive oil all over that as well, and then season it generously with salt and pepper. and then place that over the top of the vegetables and stick that in the oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to let that cook for about an hour. So very simple to actually prepare the main course of the recipe. But now we can actually get two recipes in one here with the medieval black pepper sauce. So for this, we are going to need a slice of bread. Any bread should do. And we're going to toast that black. We're also going to need a third of a cup of their juice, which is one parts water to one parts cider vinegar. You might end up needing a little bit more than that if you want the sauce to be more uh, liquidy. We're also gonna use a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, a tablespoon of ground black pepper, and a half of a tablespoon of ground ginger. If you don't have red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar will do, and we're actually just using a straight up tablespoon of red wine instead. We're gonna take that piece of burnt toast and soak it in the ver juice and the red wine vinegar. We're gonna let that break down and then we're going to mash it with a fork and break it down even more. Then I'm going to add the black pepper and the ginger, and we're gonna let that come up to a boil. You can add more liquid if you want the sauce to uh, be less thick, and you can strain it if you want it to be really liquidy. And 
I don't actually know what consistency this is supposed to be. I had a lot, I added a lot more of the bear juice than the recipe calls for. That is a lot of pepper and man, is it good. And it combines with how much acidity there is in that apple cider vinegar. Really got some kick to it in a very tangy, pleasant way. Can't wait to try this with the steak. It's actually so spicy, I'm losing my voice, which doesn't happen to me often. So at about the halfway mark, 30 minutes into the roast cooking, we're gonna take that out and just make sure that the vegetables themselves aren't burning. And for that, you can baste them with a little bit of broth or maybe just some water in order to keep them from actually charring. And then we're gonna put that back in for another half hour. Now the recipe book says that an inner temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit should be a medium rare. We had a little bit higher than 145 degrees, about 180 degrees on the inside, and it was still fairly bloody. So if you don't want it to be, if you don't want it to be a very rare steak, if you want it well cooked, just leave it in, leave it in for a little longer than an hour, I'd say. After the roast has come out of the oven, all we need to do is let it sit for 15 minutes so it doesn't bleed too much when we cut into it, and then it is ready to serve with the black pepper sauce. Almost cut the inside of my mouth with the knife there, so I'm not gonna do that again. Right out of the pan, the sauce had a lot of spice, a lot of tanginess from the vinegar, and I thought it was going to be really the standout portion of the dish, and yet, when it's actually on the steak, it does provide a nice little bit of background heat, a little bit of background tang, but it really sort of takes a step back, and it's not as aggressive of a flavor as I thought it was going to be. But it does sort of remind me of Worcestershire sauce, where it has that sort of tangy, sort of not quite smoky flavor, but it, you got the burnt bread in there. And it really complements the steak very well. And I also think that the sauce would work really well with pork. Steak is always gonna be steak. It's just steak seasoned with uh, salt and pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and try the vegetables here. It's almost like you got a nice little squeeze of lemon juice or something on there with the, um, with the bread sauce over the vegetables. There's no lemon juice in it, but that's what it tastes like. It tastes like a nice fresh salad. This was kind of an interesting recipe. The black pepper sauce is definitely uh, something that I've never tried before and not something that I feel like you would ever taste or get in the, in the modern world, so to speak. People in the comments will remind me what the name of this concept is. It, it's not coming into my head at the moment, but this recipe is, I think, so commonplace already just to have a beef roast with some vegetables that it almost doesn't transport me like into the past or anything like that. Um, even though it should, it just feels modern when I'm eating it. There are certain foods that I think the food itself transports you into the past or makes you feel like you're an adventurer or something like that. And there are other foods that would fit well with, in a given setting or in a given atmosphere, but just the food itself isn't really enough to transport me. And I think that's where this recipe sits. There's nothing about it that's ahistorical, but I think it's so commonplace that it almost feels modern, even though it's not really. Um, whereas a, a pasty or something like that might do a better job. So I think it's, where you are eating this and with whom and whether or not you're in your garb or in a tavern setting or something like that, uh, that is gonna make this recipe really pop. Whereas there are other recipes I would recommend that are going to help transport you just by eating the food itself. It is something that you would eat normally day to day. It's a good recipe, but it just didn't have that fantasy or medieval oomph for me. Now those venison pies on the other hand, that might be something for us to try out here on the channel, so let me know. But thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Cooking Anachronism. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, I'd like to wish you good luck on your adventures.